I am really focused on beginner blingers. If you want to learn the basics about rhinestones for beginners, like beginner beginner, then this video is for you. Hey now, do you want to learn how to make rhinestone shirts, designs, bags, etc., but you're really nervous and you don't know where to start? Do you want to make rhinestone shirts and you're confused, you don't know what you should get, you don't know anything about it, and you only have a cricket? then this video will be for you. This is beginner blingers, okay? Dreamy blingers. And we are going to do rhinestone from the beginning. If you want to learn all the simple basics about rhinestones, I am going to be releasing several different videos helping you start from the beginning. And if you want to make a shirt like this, look how cute and simple and nice this shirt is and you may only have Cricut, then this is going to be the video for you. So I'm going to break down everything that you need. I even am going to put something on the screen and you can take a screenshot of it. Everything that you need for beginner blingers, okay? And I'm going to take you step by step how you can use rhinestone font, TTF font, from Creative Fabrica so you can make some rhinestone templates yourself, okay? You may not have Silhouette Studio or you just don't know where to start, but you really want a simple, really cute, blingy shirt. I'm going to show you step by step how to make that. I do have other videos and more things and we'll talk about that at the end. But now let me show you how I made this shirt how you can make this shirt or something similar using your Cricut and these items I'm gonna go over, okay? Really nice, really simple. Hey now, it's your girl Shanita Nicole and welcome to Do Dream One if you're new and if you're already a dreamer, welcome, welcome back y'all, welcome back, welcome, welcome back y'all, welcome back. Today we are gonna be making this shirt like you guys saw, Bella Canvas Baby T, super cute. I have so much to talk about later in the video, but for right now, let's just jump right into the video. Let go! Okay guys, now I'm going to go over what you would need. This is in no particular order, and this is what I personally use. For rhinestones beginner blingers, you will need hot fix rhinestones. Now this is different types of rhinestones so they have to be hot fix meaning they have an adhesive back that can go on materials okay i'll personally be using a size of an ss10 for today and let's check out where i got the rhinestones from the rhinestones i'll be using today are from eve from the baby's booty and this color is rose ab hot fix and it is ss10 you will also need a design a template and design software you will need flock i get my flock from heat transfer warehouse and the description will have the link now i do want to warn you this goes fast okay you will need hot fix transfer tape, which I also get from Heat Transfer Warehouse, also called KTM Mask. You will need a cutter. I'll be using my Cricut Maker. You'll need a wax pen, painter's edge brush. This is the brush that we use to brush the rhinestones inside of our template. You'll also need a Cricut mat, a lint roller, a scraper. You can use cardstock to house your template or the chopping mat that I'm showing here from the Dollar Tree. You'll need a heat press. I'll be using my HTV Rant Auto Press specifically for today's project. Or you can use an easy press. I personally use a brayer, tweezers, a heat pillow, Teflon sheet, a weeder tool, exacto blade, and a ruler. And you'll need some type of pen or something for your rhinestones. 
okay? So these are typically the items that I need and then I'll let you screenshot them, okay? like comment share and subscribe okay guys so this is the font that i use from creative fabrica my link will be down in the description if you're interested okay this is rs04 modern diy rhinestone ttf template font okay this is bold. I love this bold thickness of it, okay? And it shows you this is the alphabet. And you will download this onto your computer and then you can type these rhinestone fonts like their actual regular letters. What happens is these are the instructions. Now, remember when I said that I'm using SS10, you want to make sure the font size is 240 for SS10. I made it 241. So <laughs> it still worked, but I'm just looking at this. And I could have swore I thought it said 241, but it's 240. Okay, it's neither here nor there. Maybe that was another font, but it's okay because it worked out. All right, it just was a little bit of extra space. But for SS10, you want your font to be 240. It literally gives you step-by-step -step instructions, close your design program, unzip the files, open, it tells you everything that you need to know, okay? So I'm not gonna go into that. However, it's telling you everything that you need to know and you see it's already downloaded. Now, if you were to specifically search Rhinestone TTF font, these four are what Creative Fabrica has. Okay, these are amazing and I'm going to try some other ones later. You can also just search rhinestone and tons of different things actually show up. They have the ombre, they have all types of wonderful things. I like that font as well. So these are really nice and you can check them out. Okay, they have templates, all types of stuff. But specifically today, we are going to be talking about the fonts in this particular font, all right? So now that we have the font, we downloaded it on our computer and now we're gonna go ahead and go inside of Cricut Design Space. Okay, now that we're inside of Cricut Design Space, we're going to go to New Project. Once inside of new project, we're going to go to text like we normally would. We're going to select the text and we're going to make it really simple because remember, this is beginners blingers. Okay. We're really, really beginner. So we just want it really easy peasy. We're going to type Q U E E N for queen. And then I'm going to make it larger. And then what I'm going to do, because I downloaded the TTF font, I did restart my Cricut so that the font can be loaded inside of the system, okay? So I restarted that, and then I am going to search system, and I'm going to search RS04. Oops. RS04. Okay, once I searched the RS04, look what showed up. This is the rhinestone design. I'm now going to select that and we're going to watch what happens. Booyah! Now there are the rhinestones. These will cut as little dots. They're going to be a basic cut under operation, okay? Now, remember, we have to make the font 240. Now, I made it 241. So we're just going to go ahead and make it 241 because that's what I did, even though it should have been 240. So it's just a little bit bigger, but it worked out perfect. So that's okay. Once I selected 241, look what happened. 
it automatically made it 14.07 inches in width and 3.22 inches in height. This is something that's very important. Let me make the canvas smaller. This is something that's very important to know. I'm using on a baby tee today. A regular t-shirt that would have been fine. It's going to be nice and tight on the baby tee because it's a baby t-shirt. It's a smaller type of shirt. So you want to be mindful that when you're using TTF fonts that you have to make sure this is what you want. So you want your words or your images, etc., to make sure that it's going to fit on the shirt. Luckily, this will fit. It is kind of large, but it's okay for me and for this project. So you want to keep that in mind. Every time you do things when you're crafting just in general, you want to keep the end result in mind. That's why it's so important to measure, to pay attention, to get familiar with your machinery, with the things that you're doing and to practice, practice, practice. Because now you know, if I use this particular font, this TTF font, I want to make sure that the words will look right and they will fit on whatever shirt that I'm designing, okay? Remember, this is beginner level, so I'm just trying to make sure I give you tips along the way. So now, this is actually simple, it's done. The only thing you have to do is make it. So we're gonna go ahead and select make it, and then I'm gonna show you all the steps for that. So that was really simple. It literally was just typing out. Okay, let's go ahead and select make it. Okay, so now that we have selected make it, it is going to go ahead and go on the Cricut mat as usual. It's letting you know that this is larger than the regular standard 12 by 12. So you got to pull out that 12 by 24, okay? I'm just moving it over just a little bit, making sure that I know how much of my rocket flock that I'll be using for today, okay? So this is the mat. It lets you know exactly where things will be cut. Like I said, I'm just trying to move it over a little bit so I can have more than enough space. I see that I have to make sure it's at least 15 inches, okay? And height and a four inches in width at least. So now I'm gonna to go to my base materials. I'm gonna use my rhinestone template. So I've used this previously, but if you're new here, you may not know. So we're gonna browse our materials. I'm gonna scroll all the way down to where it says material settings. Okay, and now I'm going to share with you the exact settings that I use for my rhinestone template. So you scroll down, it should be in alphabetical order. I believe it's in alphabetical order. And I'm going to go to rhinestone template. I'm going to check my cut pressure as well as my blades and how many times it cuts. For my rhinestone template, I'm cutting at 300 two times with a fine point blade. So if you want to set some standard ratings for yourself, you can do that. And how I figure this out is literally practice. If something cuts through the flock too much or not enough, you play around with it. But I love 300. That works for me. Okay, so I'm literally just showing you everything there. I click the rhinestone template and I selected more pressure and booyah, we are there. So now let's go ahead and load our flock onto our Cricut mat. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that I'm going to make sure I'm putting the pink velvet flock face up towards me and I'm putting the adhesive white backing onto my mat. I'm verifying that remember I checked I want to cut around 15 to 4 inches so I can have enough space for my flock. So that's why it's important to verify those things. I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to use it as a barrier with my X Acto blade to cut around it. Now my Cricut is cutting y'all. It's cutting. Now let's see if my flock settings worked out right. So I pulled it down and I decided to use my brayer to go ahead to make sure that the holes that it cut off stay onto the mat. Okay. Cause you see some holes are still in my flock, but this is basically a good cut. It looks pretty good for to me and it's not going to take too long for me to get it out. I simply just rubbed over it, brayered it, put the sticky part on my mat, and I'm just making sure the holes are coming out. And look how clean it came out. It cut really good and it works well, like I said, for me. I was happy with the results. Okay, I love the way that looks. So now I'm going to go ahead and use my Dollar Tree chopping mat or Dollar 25 tree. I am going to place this inside of my pan that I tip 
typically use to house my rhinestones, the extra rhinestones. My flock had a little bit on the top that I wanted to cut off, so I cut that off, and then I'm cutting around the sides. Okay, guys, so everything fits in there perfect. It's kind of close, but that's okay. Now, here is the beautiful bling, you guys. I'm so excited. Let me grab that pretty pink rose color there, and we're about to pour this on here and get to blinging so yes this looks so good so we're about to pour this on here and get to blinging so i just sprinkled a little bit of rhinestones on i'm taking my brush and i'm just going to circle in okay now remember it said 240 these are 241 so it's a little itty bitty bit more space i didn't know that then but it went in perfect still you guys I personally like to just go kind of in a circular motion and it just falls into place. This part is my favorite part. It's so therapeutic for me personally. I love it. So I'm just brushing it in. It's falling right into place and it's looking beautiful. You guys can see how it twinkle and glisten already. Bling, bling. Okay. Bling, bling. So it looks good, but you see how easy peasy that is. The key to this is making sure that your flock is cut correctly with the correct amount of pressure. You want to make sure that the holes are the correct size. So make sure you look at the instructions and then you want to make sure that you have a brush so you can brush it in. Look how nice and neat that looks. Now here's where I came with the problem. If you see my chopping mat, it literally fits in my pan perfectly. When I have to put my mass transfer tape over it, it's not enough space. So be mindful that I'm going to show you what I had to do for that. But what I'm doing now is I'm taking my wax pan and I'm just making sure that everything is falling into place. Sometimes when you brush, a couple of the rhinestones will flip, they'll move, it may be some in between other rhinestones, etc. So that's why you use your wax pen, and it has two parts. It has like a pen part and like a straight pen part, and then it has the wax part where the rhinestones can stick on the wax part. Once again, I love this part too. I absolutely love it. You can also use tweezers during this part as well, but I'm making sure everything is where it's supposed to be in its place, okay? Now, once again, here comes a tricky part. Y'all look, I done tried to move it. Why I do that? Why did I do that? All the rhinestones that came out, not all of them, but it was okay because like I said, I like this part. I just sprinkled those rhinestones back on there and I just circular motion and put them back in place. So if you have something, learn from my mistake. If you have something that's in a close proximity, they're really, really close, don't put it inside of your pen, okay? I got that pen from the Dollar Tree as well. Anywho, I had no problem with it because like I said, I love doing it and look how beautiful that look. Come on, rhinestones, twinkling and glisten. Okay, guys, y'all saw how that tried to take me out? So, you want to be very mindful of certain things. We are going to have to do it. Is this long enough? Nope, it's not long enough this way. So, we're going to have to do our paper this way. Cut it. Let me measure it. We looked up with this little board, y'all. This is the real, okay? So now, here is that transfer. Woo! Lord, you got to be so careful, y'all. You got to be super careful. So here is... Sticky part and this part you can make or break it. I'm gonna put this over here to save it again. And my fan is on. So we're gonna do the taco method. You can just place it down. You can place it down or you can do the taco method. It's all up to you. Let me get in a comfortable position. I'm gonna just do it. So I just put it down. And it's a couple things that kind of got out of place, but it's okay. Sometimes you just got to do it. <laughs> you just got to do it. Did y'all see how quick I did that? I was so nervous. Let's rewind it real quick. Look at that. Whew, I was scared. Sometimes you just got to do it because some of these kind of move. So we could just slide them back into place with our nail. None of them flipped over. Oh, wait, one. We did that. Looky, looky. 
That's just an extra one. But none of them flipped over except for one. Stop playing with me. I haven't done this in months. So this is amazing. <laughs> Fits to come out like that. And I ain't did it in months. All right. So everything is cool. I'm going to flip this one over. But everything looks really, really good. Okay. So I'm going to set that just down for one second. And I'm going to get these up. Because I need these rhinestones. And a couple of them slid under my other machine. Uh -uh. So I'm going to get these up and then I'm going to come back. Okay. Okay, guys. So my HTV Rhine heat press is heating up to 305. I'm going to press it for... 20 seconds typically you do 15 but i'm gonna press it for 20 and i may put a pressing pillow up under there as well just to make sure we get that additional pressure so while it's heating up which it'll be done in a couple minutes i am going to lint roll you always want to lint roll and this of course is a bella canvas this is one of the baby t stretch fit collections and this is 52 percent cotton 48 percent polyester Okay, I am going to pre-press it. I'm lint rolling it. I'm going to pre-press it. And then I think I'm going to put a pressing pillow up under there. Let me grab my pressing pillow. It's at 302, 20 seconds. We're going to do it at 305 for 20 seconds, okay? All right, so it's time to lift this up. This is a sticky paper. I think I'm going to cut some of this off. So we are going to go ahead, pull this up, pull it up very slowly, just in case you need to fix anything. Okay. Now that one flipped over. I'm not sure if y'all could see it. So I'm going to flip it over and put it there. I had to use my tweezers. That'll be fine. Okay. Now, I'm rolling the other pieces off. Look how good that is, y'all. Woo -hoo. Hold up. Oh, that end. It tore somehow. That's okay. We go come back and get that. So, let's go to the heat press. Let me move y'all over to the heat press. I'm going to place this upside down. And we're going to move to the heat press. Okay. So I'm going to pre-press it. Okay. And then, can y'all see that? All right, so I'm going to just put it in the middle. So I am going to take it and put it in the middle. Now, I'm going to have to fix this so it can be even because it's not even right now. So I'm going to twist the pillow. So we're going to take the pressing pillow. We need it to be even all the way across like this. It wasn't even. I'm going to put it up under the shirt. Okay. Make sure it's even all the way across. And then remember these lines right here. We gotta put these off. And place them right here. I need to cut a piece of this off. Booyah. Hopefully y'all can see that. And it's going all across the shirt. Super cute. I'm gonna put a little piece 
a tape on top of that one so it won't get burned. Okay. Now, this is a template that we can reuse again. Okay, barely, but we made it. All right. So now let's get to pressing. Pressing it down. I am going to get a Teflon sheet to go over it. Teflon sheet. We're going to put the Teflon sheet over it. Slide it in. 305 for 20 seconds. All right. Look at it. I'm going to go ahead and just brayer it down. Because y'all know I love my brayer. And I'm going to press it one more time. To make sure it's inside of there, okay? So I am going to slide it up under there. And then we are going to peel it off. Here is the moment of truth, y'all. Let's see how it looks up close and personal. Oh, sucky, sucky now. Oh, I'm so excited. Look how amazing that looks. Shout out to Eve, the baby's booty. This clearly could have been over just a little bit, but it's okay. It did what it was supposed to do. Look how good that looks. I am so, so, so happy with it, you guys. We did that. Yes, we did. We did it. Okay, guys, look how amazing that looks. Look at those rhinestones. I am just so happy with this project. Now, let me show you how I use that scraper to get the little sticky dots up. You guys, it came up so easy. I put it in a piece of paper, balled that thing up, and this actually came with the package from Eve. So, thanks, Eve, for that. You guys, I absolutely love this. Look at how it twinkle and glisten. Yes, queen. I absolutely love this project. It was very simple, easy, straight to the point, thorough. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know. I am so, 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 so in love with this project. I will be doing more videos for bling beginners or beginner blingers, dreamy blingers, all of the above. We'll go step by step and then we'll build up to so many more designs. If you want to check out other videos that I've done about rhinestones, check out my rhinestone playlist. I've done previous videos on how to make a rhinestone SVG template from scratch inside of Silhouette Studio how to use a purchase template and I have two videos on how to create your own template in Silhouette Studio okay so check out the rhinestone playlist and we're gonna go ahead and keep doing more videos and if you have any suggestions just let me know I am really focused on beginner blingers right I want you guys to feel confident and blinging know exactly what you need exactly what to do step by step and and thorough with it and I cannot wait to make more videos and more bling with you okay and that's a wrap please like comment share and subscribe if you have any questions comments or concerns holla at your girl if you have not already please join our Facebook group crafty queen dreamer we love it over there follow me on Instagram do dream one is the handle TikTok do dream one is the handle and I love y'all did y'all know that I think y'all knew that Anywho, y'all be safe out there, you hear? Bye! Thank you for your time. Please like, share, and subscribe. Bye!